Hi everybody, today I wanted to test out something a little bit different. Today we're going to talk about some lazy German nouns. These are some nouns that I think that the German people were just sitting around and going, what should we call this thing? I don't know, what's it do? What does it look like? Where is it located? Let's just call it that thing where it's located and what it looks like. Okay, thanks, bye. So let me give you some examples. We're going to start with places in and around Germany. This is a map of Germany, obviously. This here is called the Nordsee, which in English we call the North Sea. Not really a big deal. Perfectly fine. We call it the North Sea. They call it the North Sea. It's kind of the same thing. Over here on the east side, however, we have what we call the Ostsee. The Ostsee is the Baltic Sea in English, and the Germans call it the Ostsee. Why do we call it the Ostsee in German? Well, we already had something called the Nordsee, so we couldn't really call it the Nordsee, because it's obviously not the same sea. So we called it the Ostsee, because it was the one that's north, but it's also on the east side. So, yeah. This here is called Sachsen. Sachsen, not a big deal. No big problems. It's called Saxony in English. This is what we call Niedersachsen. Niedersachsen literally translates as Lower Saxony. So why is it north of Saxony? I have no idea. Please tell me in the comments below, because I have no idea. This makes no sense to me. This is called Rheinland-Pfalz. It's literally the Rhineland, and it's right next to where the Rhine goes through. Surprise! Right below that, we have Saarland, and that's where the Saar River goes through. Weird, right? They're very creative with their names. Speaking of being creative, Nordrhein-Westfalen which is literally like the North Rhine-Westfall side. So it's like the side that's on the west of Germany, but it's the northern part of the Rhine. Yeah. Way to go, Germans. Congratulations on being creative with naming things. Speaking of naming things that are exactly what you think they are, the Bodensee. In English, we call it like Constance. The Germans call it Bodensee. Boden meaning floor or ground, or like the bottom. Zee meaning lake. So it's literally the lake at the bottom of the country. So that's exactly where it's located. This one here is called Österreich. Österreich literally means the Eastern Kingdom or realm. And of course, it is on the Eastern side and it's kind of a kingdom or realm. Speaking of realms and kingdoms, Frankreich is the kingdom of the Franconians. So we call it Frankreich. Very creative Germans. If that wasn't bad enough, we have several castles that we call here Schloss Braunfels, for instance. This one is literally the castle Brown Cliff. And as you can see, it's brown, so is the cliff, and so is the castle brown cliff. It's also located north of Frankfurt, in case you were wondering if you want to look it up. This next one is called Hochburg, which is literally just like a high castle, because it's on top of a hill. So they called it Hochburg. Very creative. This one's in southern Germany, in case you were wondering. I think the most entertaining ones, though, are from animals. The animal names that they've come up with for German animals are just very simplistic. Let me give you some examples. Zeugetiere. Literally, in English, we call these things mammals. But in German, we call them suckling animals. Like animals that suckle. You know, because mammals are fuzzy animals that take milk from their parents and stuff. Then we have things like Nilpferd. Nilpferd is obviously the horse of the Nile. So somebody was sitting at the Nile River goes, Hey, what's that horse doing over in the river? They're like, I don't know, there's not really much of a horse. They're like, well, it's kind of a horse. We should just call it an, a Nile horse. Oh, that makes sense. We'll just call it the Nilpferd. Schnabeltier. Schnabeltier is literally the build animal, like the thing that has a bill. And so we have here the platypus. In English, that makes no sense to me. I don't know where we got our word from, but Schnabeltier at least makes sense. We have a bill, it's an animal, it's a bill animal. Faultier. Faul means lazy, so Faultier would then be the lazy animal. It's not too far off from our English word. Our English word sloth also means lazy. Stinktier. Literally the stinking animal. We call it a skunk in English, but in German they just say what it is. It stinks and it's an animal. It's a stinking animal. Stinktier. Stachelschwein. Literally like the, the stabby pig, or the pig with sticks on it, or the pig with spikes. And so it's a pig, obviously, that has like pointy things on it. It's a porcupine in English, but we, it doesn't really make any sense. So we call it a Stachelschwein in German. 
My personal favorite is the Wolverine, which in German is a Vielfraß, which literally is like the thing that eats a bunch. Fraß is the past participle of fressen, which is like the thing that ate. And then so we have here Vielfraß, thing that ate a bunch, because Wolverines eat a bunch. Beutelzeuge, in English we would call these things marsupials. Beutelzeuge in German literally means like bag sucklers. So things that suckle, as in like zeugetia, which is the, again, word for mammals, and they happen to have pouches, which would be a beutel. For example, we have here the beutelrate, which is a rat that has a pouch. So that's, that's obviously a possum. And then the beutelteufel, which is like a devil, again, with a pouch. And so we have the Tasmanian devil. If you're not really sure what to call something, you can just ask yourself a few questions. The first of which is, was fressen sie? What do they eat? So, for instance, a Fleischfresser, literally a meat eater, is a carnivore. Or a Pflanzenfresser, which is a plant eater, literally speaking, is a herbivore. Or an Allesfresser, my personal favorite on the list, is an everything eater. In other words, it's an omnivore. They eat everything. Allesfresser. If you're not sure still, you can always ask yourself, well, what do they do? Was tun sie? Uh, Kriechtier. Kriechen is to crawl. Tier is an animal. So the Kriechtier are the animals that crawl around on the ground. These are reptiles. Raubtier are like Rauben. Rauben is to steal, and Tier is an animal. So the stealing animals are what we call the predators, or the ones that pick up things that are scavengers. You know, the things that pick up other things whenever they're dead. A Maulwurf comes from two different words. We have here werfen, which is to throw. If you have a throw, like something threw something, the throw was awesome or whatever, that's wurf, which is the throw. Maul is like the mouth of an animal or the snout. So this is like a snout throw, which would be exactly what a mole does. It throws dirt around with its nose. So it's a maulwurf. Or if you have like a really small bear that keeps washing his hands, that would be a waschbär, because it obviously is washing his hands and kind of looks like a bear and it's really tiny. If you're still not sure, you can always ask yourself this other question, which is, wie sehen sie aus? What do they look like? So, my personal favorite on this list has to be what we call the red panda. The Germans also call it a rota panda sometimes, but they also say kleiner panda, which is just small panda, which isn't all that creative, but it's still not nearly as fun as katzenbär. Katzenbär is like a cat bear, because it's a bear that sort of kind of resembles a cat. And then we also have a feuerfuchs which is like a fiery fox, so it kind of resembles a fox, and it looks like it might have caught on fire. So we have here a foya fox. If you're looking for a sea cow, uh, we also call them that in English. Uh, sometimes, whenever we're talking about the manatee, is what its official name is. But the Germans officially call it a zeku, and it's just zeku, meaning sea cow, or like water cow. Then we have the bat, which is a fledermaus, which uh, fleda actually comes from like an older German word that kind of means to flutter or to fly. And then mouse is like a mouse. So it's literally a flying mouse, which is fledermaus. And then the other one that I absolutely think is hilarious is an Erdmännchen. Männchen is like a little man. Erde is earth. So this is like a little earth man, which uh, in English we call like a meerkat. Don't mind me. I'm just a meerkat. Now let's look at some hospital vocabulary. I've only got four words on this list, but the list is actually relatively simple. We have Krankenhaus, literally a sick house, also known as a hospital. How did you get there? Well, we took the Krankenwagen to the Krankenhaus. So we have here a Krankenwagen, which is like a car that is for sick people. So it's a Kranken, sick, wagen, wagon, or car. And then who took care of you once you got to the Krankenhaus through the Krankenwagen? Well, that would be the Krankenschwester, of course. That would be the nurse. It's the sister that takes care of you when you're sick, which is krank. So it's the Krankenschwester who took care of you at the Krankenhaus after you got there through the Krankenwagen. Now, if you're looking for an Arzt, an Arzt is a doctor. But if you're looking for a tooth doctor, also known as a dentist in English, then we would have here a Zahnarzt, which is literally just tooth doctor. Some other fun ones show up whenever you're talking about school or office supplies, and check out this list. We have here Radiergummi. Radieren is to delete or erase. Gummi is a rubber, so this is like a rubber thing that deletes stuff. A Drahthefter. A Draht is like a, a cable or a string made out of wire or something like that. Hefter is like a thing that puts two things together, so it's literally like a... a cable or a line sticker together thinger, Drahthefte. 
Bleistift. I didn't think this one really belonged on the list until I looked up to what the word Bly means. Bly is the word for lead. Stift means like stick. So we have here a lead stick. That would be a Bleistift. It's a pencil. If you have one of those Stift that happens to be colored, you would have then a Farbstift. Farbe being color, Stift being obviously the stick part. So this is a color stick. Farbstift. If you have one of them that's colored, but it happens to end in a, uh, a felt tip, that would be a Filzstift, because Filz is felt, and then Stift being the stick. So this is a felt stick, a Filzstift, or a marker. If you need to write something else, you can still have like a ball writer, which would be a Kugelschreiber, a Kugel being a ball, a Schreiber being a writer. So we have here Kugelschreiber, pen. If you have things that stick to things, you can just put Klebe in front of it. So we have here Klebstoff, which is like literally the sticky stuff. It's stuff that sticks to things, which would be glue. And then of course we have Klebeband, which is again a sticky band or like a, a rope that, you know, sticks to things. You know, tape. Klebeband. And then what I like to call miscellaneous bits of awesomeness, because they don't really fit into a category of any sort, but they're at least fun words. I like the word Staubsauge. Zauge comes from like the same word as Zaugen, which is to suck. So same thing we had with Zauge, uh, Zeugetia earlier with the mammals. But this is a Staub, which is dirt. Zauge is sucker. So this is like a dirt sucker, which is a vacuum cleaner. A Mundtuch is like a mouth towel, also known as a napkin. It's a towel for your mouth, so it's a Mundtuch. Fahrrad uh, is a bicycle, and it doesn't sound all that complicated. A Rad is a wheel, and a Fahren is to drive, so Fahrrad is a driving wheel. But the other word, a little older word, is Drahtesel. Esel being a donkey, and Draht again being from that example that I had earlier of a wire. So this is literally like a wire donkey. In other words, it's a donkey that's made out of wire, because back in the day you would ride a donkey, and then once they had bicycles, you would just ride a bicycle instead, which is called a Drahtesel. Then we also have a Wagenheber. Haben is to like to pick something up. Wagen is obviously a word for a car, so we have a Wagenheber, which is like a car picker-upper. Uh, it's also known as a jack in English. And then of course we have the word Steckdose. Uh, a Dose is like a place to put something, so sometimes a bag or uh, a depository or a box or something like that. Uh, and then we have Steck, which is like the thing that you put into something else, which would be a Steckdose. It's the thing that you put into something else that has the place for that thing that you put it into. That's my list of lazy German nouns. There are a ton of these in the German language, which is one of the reasons that it is so easy to remember German words. If you have some other one of these that you would like to add to the list, write them down in the comments below because the German language is full of fun words like this. The animal kingdom is amazing for a list like this. And then household items and other fun stuff, just write them in the comments down below. Let me know what you think about this video. And of course, see you next time. Cheers.